Good morning, welcome to my trash den. It's been a weird couple weeks. I've felt a little bit like lost creatively. So I've just been feeling a little bit overwhelmed and like I'm not doing anything particularly well. So last night I was like paralyzed with just like wanting to curl up in a ball and not do anything. It's also a normal work day, so this is just like the hour before I have to start my regular work. Anyway, all that to say, I'm gonna clean up the space because it's gonna feel better. I'm gonna make a list of all the things that I need to do and then like dealing with the chaos, you know? So let's get to it. Before I got into my quote unquote real work, I told myself I had to deal with this mounting pile of mail mail. So this first box is from my tried and true Sweet and Nail Supply. Since filming this unboxing, I have used this chrome powder a number of times. I'll insert a photo of a set I made with it. This stuff goes hard. Doesn't look like much, but it's one of the better chrome powders I've used in a long time. It just goes on real smooth. I have been slowly building my collection of zigzag gels. The thing I like best about these is that they're really viscous, so they're a true 3D gel, but also they're non-wipe, which not all 3D gels are non-wipe. The Honey Top, still my fave base for chromes. I waited for this gel to come back in stock for a very long time, and then finally was able to get my hands on it. But it's a 3D pearl clay. Also building my collection of true syrup or glass gels. Two of my go-to top coats, the scratch tops, my like alt number one at the moment, and then the Izemi Low. These are two restocks. I ran out of both the yogurt gel blue and the nude. That's it from Sweetie Nail Supply. I'll link all the products in the description. They sent me this package like a full month ago. And I'm just getting to opening it now because I wanted to film it. So let's go through it. When I first started nails, I bought a bunch of stamping stuff and never really fell in love with it because I found it quite challenging. So we're going to see how this goes. These are the stamping polishes themselves. Cute. Stamping is really good for patterns because sometimes you don't want to be painting like 1,000 little squares. That's where stamping plates kind of come in. That said, it can be challenging to do, or for me it is. But I follow uh, Talia's nail studio, and she's the queen of nail stamping. And her pretty much her whole press on shop is based off of stamping designs, which is really cool. I just haven't mastered the skill yet, so this will be a fun opportunity to try. They kindly gave me a discount code for you. I'm not gonna get into all of this right now, but I will try stamping later. If you're also interested in trying stamping plates out, I'll include their link in the promo code below. Okay, next up, this is a package from Bonnie B, and I centered this entire purchase around one specific product. Um, but the first thing I'm going to show is some pressed chromes. I've been trying to move all of my chrome into press format because I just don't like how much mess loose chromes cause, and I don't like the concept of it being in my air and in my lungs. So here's an attempt. I haven't actually tried these yet. I don't know if they work very well. Okay, here she is, star of the show. If you can believe it, this was the product I was trying to get my hands on. I've almost bought it at this time last year and I didn't, but it's just the most realistic snow glitter I've seen and it's so cute. And I used it in my most recent Christmas set that I made, which I'll show you in my next vlog.
This is a fine silk mag powder, and then I broke my pressed chrome rule specifically for this chrome, which is a white silver chrome. It's really pretty. This came in the mail yesterday. It is a under desk drawer. So my plan is to put it here where I sit, where my right hand is, and have some of my most used brushes right here. My MPF brushes is at the moment. We're in here. Whole plan is to move them a little bit closer to reach because I use them all the time. decided to put the tips facing this way because I tried putting, I just thought I'm gonna jam the ends of the brushes and this way I can see what brush I'm using. Oh, stunning. See, my fear is if I close, they'll like jam up against this bit. So there probably should be something that holds the bodies of the brushes in place. Look at the state of my desk right now. But I've now cleared up this drawer. This is where I kept all my MPF brushes. So I have space, which is great because I feel like I'm overflowing everywhere. Above it, I have like it's called the junk drawer. We tend to not open this drawer. Oh, that's why. I'm not sure what we're gonna put in here. I also don't know, like, do I keep these? That insane. It's like keeping your iPhone box, you know? But I might need them. So I've been putting all my extras into this case, but the problem is that the reason I like these cases so much is because they each have an individual lid. And the fear here is, you know, you tip it and everything goes everywhere and what a disaster that would be. But not only that, if I put extras in here and let's say I wanted to refill like the blue hearts, how do I effectively get the blue hearts out of this box. I think I should just exclusively use these for bigger charms that wouldn't be such a nightmare if it were, you know, mid-range bigger charms that I could sort out. Something I need to work towards a solution on. Not a problem for today.
I'm always so curious about other people's workflow, so I thought I'd talk you through some of the details of my own workflow. So what I normally like to do is export the orders that I'm gonna work on that day. So I figure out what shape and size of the orders I'm making that day. You can actually see on my desk here, the sets I would have worked on the day before. And once they're done, I just leave them on their stands and then only take them off the stands when I'm ready to package them all. So you can see I'm prepping two stands for what would be two sets of the same design as the ones that are currently on the desk there. And I normally batch work in terms of like major steps. So I do the tip setup, the prep and the base. And when I say base, I just mean base color. And then I move on to painting details and top coat. And then the final step is to package them. I sometimes get questions about how I organize the sets once they're done and how I know like who sets whose. The short answer is I don't really. I, by the time it comes to packaging them, I like print off the shipping label and the packing slip and I look at what they ordered and what size and then I correspond whatever the packaged nails are that corresponds with that. And I can at this point kind of just do that by eye, but sometimes I do have to check and like I'm, you know, looking between a, a short almond small and a short almond extra small and like staring at them being like, which one's which? I'm not making enough sets where this is really an issue for me but some other people have much more streamlined systems in terms of like categorizing which order is which. I'm just not making that many sets to the point where I'm not generally able to figure out one from the other. If I can't tell for the life of me what the size and shape is by eye, I will just look at the back of the tips and look at the numbers, but that has very rarely happened. This exact shot reminds me that some people have messaged me saying they can't get their hands on the acid-free tip primer. That's okay. You can either manually buff your tip. You could even use maybe just some acetone. It'll kind of create like a foggy, hazy tip, but you're better off maybe giving it a light buff. I did want to mention that if you have a question, especially if it's a specific question about your press on nail business that you want me to answer, the best place to do that is to leave it in a comment on YouTube. I've received a lot of DMs lately with really specific questions about advice you're looking for based on your press on nail business. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love seeing them, so don't stop. But if you haven't received a response from me, it's likely because I read it, thought, that deserves like a five minute sit down response and then I go back to find it later and it kind of gets lost in the DMs. If you have a question, there's likely 10 other people with the same question. So please leave it in the YouTube comments. We can all kind of upvote the questions we most want responses to. I can take the time to write a thoughtful response that everybody can read and reflect on. And if you see someone's question that you know the answer to, please go ahead and respond. I certainly don't have all the answers, but wouldn't it be nice if we could all help each other out? As I mentioned, I really like to batch work the major steps. So even though I probably created these five or six sets over a couple days, 
I will mount them all at the same time. And the reason I do this is because I work from a really small space. And so the same space that I'm painting in is the same space that I'm mounting in. And it takes a long time to clean up and get it switched over. And so when I'm mounting nails, I really want to ensure that that space is dust free, paint free and entirely clean. And so I wait and leave the sets on the stands and do them all at the same time. I started this vlog in a pretty low place, but after having run my own business for a little while now, I started to notice a pattern in my thinking and emotions. With many highs come many lows. I no longer prescribe as much weight to those negative emotions when they do rise, and instead just keep going, trusting that in time I will once again be back on the upswing. <laughs>